was a very hands-on section uh, because of that troubleshoot. You really should know these things cold because you've got the API requests and then you've got to understand how to build those API requests using some kind of uh, software. And then you're uh, understanding the return request from that with the uh, HTTP error code. So there's a lot of moving pieces in this domain, hands-on all the time. Don't skip lab day on this one. Hello and uh, welcome to domain two of the CCNA automation, which is on understanding and using APIs. This is a uh, 20% of the exam. This is a very hands-on heavy section of, of the exam. Uh, I'm going to start with the, the, the topic I mentioned a little bit last time, which is the verbs that are used here are construct, utilize, and troubleshoot. This is the first time we see troubleshoot in this series. Um, uh, Quinn, what's the difference between troubleshoot, construct, okay, where, where do you grade the knowledge you need here? I mean, if we if we do kind of a ladder, you know, you've got the the high level is is the describe, and you've got compare, and then you've got the utilize and constructor, like kind of the top three. Troubleshoot is even deeper behind that because if you think about the order of operations, you know, I can build something. And okay, it works, you know, it's kind of that it works on my machine thing. But if I, if you hand me a piece of code and it doesn't work, I now have to put myself in your shoes and understand your thinking and what you did and then reverse engineer that and fix it. So it's not just understanding uh, how to uh, read or build something new. It's understanding the errors that you're generated because of that and then how to fix the problem based on the errors that you're seeing. Um, so it's really that that ultimate understanding. And that's why, to your point, Francois, this is a very hands-on section uh, because of that troubleshoot. You really should know these things cold. And that's you know, and it's building on that, right? Because you've got the API requests, and then you've got to understand how to build those API requests using some kind of uh, software. And then you're uh, understanding the return request from that with the uh, HTTP error code. So there's a lot of moving pieces in this domain for sure. Yeah, so let's talk a bit about how we get this hands-on knowledge because we're talking about knowledge of APIs and and really mostly most modern APIs are REST, RESTful APIs, which means that they're carried over HTTP. So the, the kind of tools you're going to use to to practice that are things like Postman, Bruno. There's a few others, but those are the ones we see the most. And then um, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to be making API requests to networking systems. You're going to get answers, you're going to parse them, and then you're going to need the basics of doing that in Python with a library called requests. It sounds like a lot, but tools like Bruno, for example, will generate Python code for you. So you don't have to uh, figure everything out yourself. There's a bit of a, of a crutch built in, and, and, and that's the, the sort of thing you're going to need in your studies. Um, I know we also need to get into some of the more advanced topics, authentication, Quinn, that sort of stuff. Can you can you cover that a bit? First of all, I do want to touch something you mentioned earlier. I want to do a call back to our our last video um, around domain one about uh, data types, right? So that was a very dry piece of it. And you're like, why do we need to understand XML and or or JSON or whatever? Uh, because this is where we're going to be getting data back from those APIs. We we send a request out to gather some data or put some data on a device. We're gonna get that request back in one of those data formats. And to your point, we're gonna need to be able to parse that. Um, on top of that, we're also gonna need to understand API authentication methods. So um, they're, in a perfect world, everything would authenticate the same way, um, but we don't live in a perfect world. So understanding how to make an authentication or an API request we, we don't just have open APIs, right? Like we, you have to know that you're authorized to make that. So uh, we do that through API keys. We do that through base 64 encoding of usernames and passwords. Uh, we have um, uh, OAuth tokens. There's uh, other things like uh, um, uh, a two-step uh, authentication like we do through SD-WAN. There's a variety of, of, of authentication methods that can be used. So understanding not just how to make the API calls, but how you authenticate against these controllers or devices uh, appropriately to make those API calls is also very important. And all those calls you're talking about, they're carried over HTTP, all right? The, the lower protocol layer below, below the REST API is HTTP. So you need to understand HTTP. You need to understand the verbs of HTTP, get, you know, and the other ones that are used to make changes with APIs. But you also need to understand the error codes. Like it's not all going to be 404 here. We're getting to the big leagues of, of HTTP error codes. And um, as you get more hands-on with APIs, as you try things, 
as you make mistakes and you forget a curly bracket in, a, in that JSON, like, like Quinn was talking about the formats, you're going to get some new types of HTTP errors you haven't seen before, which will help you. So, so get some the hands on, break things, make mistakes, understand the behavior of the APIs when they break, which will allow you to troubleshoot when you get to the exact. The final piece of it is, is, is a lot of these platforms that we use in the CCNA automation um, have a built-in API inspector or API uh, swagger, interactive swagger documentation. Uh, it's usually in like the settings, or there's some kind of API docs or whatever on the platform itself. Um, but you, uh, once you're logged in, you are already authenticated, so you don't need to worry about doing that piece of it. And you're just presented with some documentation wherein you can put values in or, or make a GET request against maybe some kind of fabric, or maybe you're you're doing a GET against um, uh, devices and organization or whatever. And it's making that API call for you so you can understand what the API does, but also what's going to return and how that API is going to behave. It, it's it's going to give you a list of codes, you know, 200 OK, 201 OK. Maybe there's a, a 401 or a 414 or something about unauthorization or malformed data formats. It'll tell you not only what uh, will happen when it's good, but also what happens when it fails. So utilize that documentation on the controllers as well, because that's a good stepping stone. You know, so you've got the API docs, then you've got your Postman Bruno, then you've got the the code that's generated from from the request library. So it's a, ni a nice natural progression. But again, to your point, hands on all the time. Don't skip lab day on this one. Don't skip lab day. And, you know, one thing about documentation, it's not just something you're going to get to utilize. You actually need to build the skill of being able to read documentation quickly. Because you're going to be time constrained when you take this exam. There's going to be a lot of questions. And if it takes you five or ten minutes to read an API doc because you don't know how to read an API doc, like like Quinn said, that's time you're wasting. So this is the... Every step of the process from API doc to Bruno to Python is something that you need to do over and over, over as many platforms as you can in your in your lab, because that's that's going to come in handy. Cool. I think we've covered everything for this one. Uh, uh, go, go to the gym, do, do your workouts on this one. This is a hands-on one. We'll see you for the next topic.